I think he's going to be much more careful about making comments uh, that could be interpreted as pivoting, pausing, et cetera, et cetera. Because think about what happened in July when he used the term, you know, we're at a new, that, that, that it could have been interpreted as we're at a neutral policy and was widely interpreted that we're at a neutral policy. Ignoring, of course, the fact that he said in the next pretty much two sentences later that we're going to a restrictive policy. But the markets took that as, as the Fed's going to pivot. Um, he then pretty much had to come out at Jackson Hole and spank the market and say no. And that was, and that was, you know, that more or less began a decline that, that really only ended at the end of the quarter. You're listening to IBKR Podcasts. Find more conversations at IBKRPodcasts.com. Please remember any trading discussions are for information purposes only and are not intended to portray recommendations. Please listen to further disclosures at the end of today's episode. Now, welcome to our show. Welcome to another episode of IBKR Podcast, this week with a focus on economics. Joining me today is Interactive Brokers Chief Strategist, Steve Sosnick. Welcome, Steve. Hello, Andrew. And Senior Economist, Jose Torres. Welcome, Jose. Good afternoon, Andrew. So this edition is conveniently sandwiched between the September PCE report and what that tells us about inflationary pressures and the October jobs report. And if that, as if that wasn't enough, we've also got the outcome of the FOMC's November meeting on Wednesday. Steve, very briefly, since we're now in November, did the stock market put in a meaningful low in October? Um, a meaningful low? Yes. The low? Still, still too early to say. Um, I think uh, I, I'm still concerned about the the idea that people are are moving ahead um, yet again. To, this time, the pivot is off the table, but they're moving ahead, sort of to a pause or to. And we'll talk about that more, uh, I'm sure, in the next few minutes. The other thing to keep in mind is QT is really just beginning, and it's very difficult to deflate this kind of balloon that they've inflated in an orderly manner. And we already saw the gilt market come very close to breaking in the UK. And I don't know what it will be, but I can almost assure you something else will break as as QT continues. As a result, I think it's premature to just sort of say that, you know, we had the low on September 30th. See you later. I, I still believe that until or unless we see a meaningful change either in QT or Fed rate policy, that we have not seen the absolute low. Okay, very good. Uh, Jose, let's get back to inflation that's been hitting consumers really hard, whether it's household goods, grocery stores, gasoline, dining out, or travel. Based on the most recent PC data, are we seeing any relief within those various categories in the index? On balance, barely any relief. Bro broad price pressures instead with services leading the pack. The only price declines were in gasoline and apparel. Gasoline's relief, by the way, may be short-lived. Gasoline is up in October relative to September, presenting a setup of potentially discouraging inflation readings in November as gasoline shifts from a market tailwind over the last few months to an inflation headwind in the next few. Europe's winter may complicate things further as supplies remain tight and production weak. An additional headwind can come from the possibility of a Chinese reopening, negative for oil price relief but positive on the supply chain front. Apparel's price softness is driven by excess inventory at retailers amidst declining demand, leading to discounts. Demand is slowing, and that's positive for inflation, but is it quickly moving down to 2%? No, because supply factors continue to hamper progress on the inflationary front, namely labor shortages, materials shortages, and supply chain and commodity complex inefficiencies. So which categories within the report are showing the largest price increases at this point, Jose? Mainly services, within services, transportation, shelter, healthcare, and financial services led the price increases. For the most part, essential services whose costs continue to increase against the backdrop of inelastic demand and higher wages. Once price increases are registered in these categories, they are difficult and perhaps nearly impossible to reverse. When an army of workers receive large wage increases and landlords increase rents to offset rising costs to save margins, those increases are sticky price resistant, and are characterized mostly by inelastic demand. Our economy isn't conditioned to tell workers to expect reduced paychecks in the future or for landlords to expect lower rent rolls in the future. 
That's why inflation in these categories are such a challenge for inflation expectations. There's a risk of these increases being expected over the long haul, creating a feedback loop of higher inflation for longer. Now, during the pandemic, individuals splurged on home renovations, creating their own home office or a home entertainment center. As we kind of get back to normal, as the economy normalizes, have we seen a downswing in similar expenditures on those same goods? And, and has it helped co uh, decrease cost pressures for consumer goods, do you think? We have seen a downsizing in goods spending. Unfortunately, the decrease in demand hasn't offset production difficulties from a pricing perspective, so cost pressures have continued rising. As demand continues to decline and production continues improving, the expectation of goods discounts rises. Relative to pre-pandemic levels, though, shipping costs remain high, supply chains remain pressured, the commodity complex remains inefficient, leading to materials shortages and higher costs, and labor shortages have also pressured goods production. So thinking about the November FOMC next, do you think that the Federal Reserve is frustrated with the PCE, or has the Fed accepted that it will take quite a long time to get inflation under control? What's your take on that? It's been a challenge. It's very tough to continue to see hot inflation readings after so many rate hikes. I think they've accepted that inflation is a tough opponent and market volatility and economic weakness are the expensive costs of victory. They're expecting higher unemployment in 2023. That hasn't manifested yet, which means they're likely to stay aggressive here until they see more economic weakness. Chair Powell has been shortening his comments recently and communicating in an increasingly unambiguous manner. He understands that tilting towards an accommodative posture early can lead to another inflationary surge, like it did in the 1970s. Dovishness from central banks around the world, including Canada and Australia, are leading the market to believe that we've reached peak central bank hawkishness and that the appetite for more tightening is weakening. Any small hint of dovishness or a touch of less aggressiveness, and the market may, meet, may take that to mean 50 basis points instead of 75 in December. A slower pace of rate hikes and light at the end of the tunnel for investors. Bulls will take it and run with it. Steve, how might Friday's payroll report influence the Fed's thinking? Do, do, do they get a look at this for the actual meeting? a great question. I've always wondered, I, I know they get sort of a, an advanced look is what I, well, I shouldn't say I know this. I've heard that they do. I, I'm not positive they do or don't. Maybe, you, maybe Jose, do you have any sense of that? I, I actually think that payrolls are, are more or less off the table for the Fed. They, they, we're, we're at full employment or, or mm. perhaps beyond it. And so if you think of the Fed's dual mandate as full employment and stable prices, well, we're pretty much good on the first part. The second part is the real problem. And they've told us that they're willing to sacrifice employment on on behalf of, of you know, trying to fight inflation. So I, I don't, the market's going to make something of it. They always do. But ultimately, I don't think it changes the picture that much, barring a true outlier number. If it's somewhere around consensus, markets will move. But I really don't think it changes the Fed's thinking all that much. Will we hear anything different from the from Chairman Powell at the at the uh, FOMC press conference afterwards, do you think? I think he's going to be much more careful about making comments uh, that could be interpreted as pivoting pausing, et cetera, et cetera. Because think about what happened in July when he used the term, you know, we're at a new, could have been interpreted as we're at a neutral policy and was widely interpreted that we're at a neutral policy, ignoring, of course, the fact that he said in the next pretty much two sentences later that we're going to a restrictive policy. But the markets took that as, as the Fed's going to pivot. He then pretty much had to come out at Jackson Hole and spank the market and say no. And that was and that was, you know, that more or less began a decline that, that really only ended at the end of the quarter. So from mid-August through through late September, it, it was a nasty market. I think he wants to avoid that. There's also been hints that the Fed is going to be a little more judicious with, with guidance. And so I think that's going to be the tone is I think it's maybe we should be expecting what I'm going to call a more mysterious Chairman Powell. Maybe the fact that we're taping this on Halloween. So I don't want to say that he's going to be a market ghoul or spook the market, but I do think that um, we'll have a little bit of an air of mystery as we go forward. Jose, your final thoughts on the Fed, are they in keeping with Steve's views or are you thinking differently at this point? Thinking pretty similarly, uh, it's going to be a trick or treat Wednesday uh, for the Fed. I think it's time to put the genie back in the bottle for good. Chair Powell understands that if they don't tackle inflation now, the longer it persists, the higher the challenge later. Uh, taking the path of least resistance 
of just accepting higher inflation is really bad for the economy in the medium to long term. So I, I do think that being unambiguous and being clear on inflation being the main problem, given that, like Steve said, employment is already so strong, I think that's the play here. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us today. We have Steve Sosnick, the Chief Strategist here at Interactive Brokers, and Jose Torres, our Senior Economist. Thank you both. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. My pleasure. Don't forget, folks, to check us out on ibkr.com and look out for the IBKR campus under the education menu. Thanks for joining me again today. Bye, everybody. Thanks for listening to IBKR Podcasts. As always, we have more episodes at ibkrpodcasts.com. And if you're interested in learning more about interactive brokers, visit ibkr.com. We offer more trading education material, such as webinars at ibkrwebinars.com, financial and economic commentary at tradersinsight.news, market-related courses at tradersacademy.online, and quant-related articles at ibkrquant.com. The analysis in this material is provided for information only and is not and should not be construed as an offer to sell or the solicitation of an offer to buy any security. To the extent that this material discusses general market activity, industry or sector trends, or other broad-based economic or political conditions, it should not be construed as research or investment advice. To the extent that it includes references to specific securities, commodities, currencies, or other instruments, those references do not constitute a recommendation by IBKR to buy, sell, or hold such investments. The material does not and is not intended to take into account the particular financial conditions, investment objectives, or requirements of individual customers. Before acting on this material, you should consider whether it is suitable for your particular circumstances and, as necessary, seek professional advice.